Hey everyone, Movie Boy here. Congratulations! You have now made it to our third and final installment of how we did our green screen, 3D spaceship, holographics, and on screen graphics shot. So now, we're going to leave a lot of that technical stuff behind and start talking about a part that I think a lot of tutorials fall short of. It's the area where they'll tell you how to put something together, how to make a 3D ship, but they really won't talk about the why. Um, so we're gonna focus on lighting design and sound design and uh, set design, areas which I think kind of get left out of a lot of these special effects tutorials to talk to you about how to make that shot look more polished, look more professional. At the end of the day, you don't wanna spend so much time putting together some awesome thing that you've just spent weeks or months getting together and then still have it fall flat. So, for those of you who think this might get a little too into the esoteric theory, I will also include at the end a lot of bonus material as far as uh, areas I found, scripts, utilities that will really help you with your on-screen graphics, and um, share the love. So, let's get going. One, two, three. Movie boy! Da -da -da. I will admit that this shot in its final form is still too busy. There's too much going on. But I decided for the sake of the tutorial that it was worth it to kind of overload the front end uh, with all these graphics and holograms because then at least I could show how you could do the planets and the spaceships and the uh, uh, more uh, stereotypical uh, flatter screens. One area to talk about at least a little bit is costume design. Now, if I had had the time and the resources and the money, I would have focused a little bit more on the costume design. So here we kind of threw something together that roughly played along the lines of what we typically do with our space outlaws these days, which is namely uh, leather and black. Uh, at the same time here, uh, I wanted to introduce a little bit of color, so uh, I was lucky that my wife had a uh, blue leather jacket. I think it just added just a touch of a futuristic role, you know, something that um, other outfits wouldn't have conveyed as easily. But look at what we've got here. We just have her. She sits. She's looking at something, she makes a decision, stands up out of frame, and then we cut to her other shot where she's already standing and she walks out of frame. There's nothing in it that is necessarily saying sci-fi, let alone a space captain listening to a distress call and walking out of the shot. So everything that lends itself to that story had to come from other areas of design. We had to convey what kind of space she was in, and it's not enough to just say, well, it's going to be steel and metal, because then it could have looked like she was just in some industrial complex somewhere. Even if the shot goes by rather quickly, we as audience members have become sophisticated enough to pick up on a lot of cues to inform ourselves. For your lighting design, we have an umbrella here, and we have another one you can kind of make out here. Both of those are primarily lighting and evening out the green screen so that we can get an easy key. As you can see, we have a darker section here, and I later had to contend with the fact uh, that this green screen was much darker, uh, but it turned out to be not that big of a deal since she really doesn't move that much in the shop. We have this china ball here to be our soft primary light on her to give her a nice soft fill. Um, and then uh, there is a, it's hard to see here, but there's a low light on barn doors that is coming from behind her and hitting her here, which is what's creating these uh, highlights across her here. This helps to separate her from our eventual background, uh, regardless of how that would have turned out. And then we also have this little light here. Now, all of these lights, as far as color temperature, are tungsten based. So uh, once you balance for those, this LED right here would come out a little blue to give her just a bit of an edging here and help uh, give the sense of the computer screens that would be eventually around her. We have our actress, Roughly Compton. If I were to leave this as it is and put the uh, graphics on here, and let me uh, slide those on real quick. Let's see, these two here. I will let that come in. This is not standing out as much as it should. I really need her and this area here to be our focal point. So I need to strike a balance here. 
Because if I just throw all this into complete shadow, sure, now this is showing up, but we've kind of lost our set. We've lost uh, our sense of placement where she is. Let's take off the screens right now. And let's just focus on the lights. Element in After Effects uh, is great in that you can light it with your After Effects lights. You don't have to like pre-bake necessarily and everything else. So let's start with these lights. Let's look over here. So I created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main lights and then adjusted it with glows and did special effects with Lux on them and then shine to give them dimension. But uh, I focus on that little part back in part two of how the light focuses on her. But for now, let's look at the lights that we brought in. So we have a number of them. We have a light that I had way back in the hallway, which was just a spotlight uh, set at a very high intensity. Um, with a cone here and definitely a blue cast. Uh, I chose a lot of these lights, as you will see, to be a blue cast uh, to help re them recede in the background so that our orange graphics would punch up more uh, in the front um, without mixing up too much in the background. So we have an ambient light that I created, which is another spotlight. Uh, we have a light back in the right back corner one in the left back corner. We have a hot spotlight that we are throwing onto our actress. We can help separate her from the background. I had a little light that was following our little uh, floating Wheatley uh, drone robot. And I have the red light that's coming from outside on the right hand side uh, in uh, to give a sense of um, with the red sunlight coming through, another way of letting us know that we are not in our solar system, let alone uh, near Earth. Here's what the second shot looks like um, without any real lighting design in it at all. Uh, let's start with uh, our ambient light here. Okay, so at least this gives us, this was just to uh, fill in the background a little bit, just to you know, get it out of the shadows a little bit. Let's go back to um, our beginning frame here. So this light here is just giving some visibility to what's going on behind the chair here. Um, our next light is this blue, light blue right back corner. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the ambient light so we can just see what that one is doing. Now we've got a whole lot of props sitting here. In fact, we can turn on the one in the left corner as well because they're both trying to do the same thing. So right now we do not have all the lights on, but you can see how we're still trying to create uh, a, sh a shape around our actress to give a sense of what the set is. By having nooks and crannies and shapes and props and whatnot, you have the ability to build dimension to make it seem like a real space. If you decide to build your sets with just flat walls and flat floors, it's gonna be difficult to light. It's gonna be difficult to make it look real because very few things in real life are just flat, perfect walls. What we have here besides the careful lighting we're doing here is we have a lot of what in a real production would be called practical lights. We've got uh, some subtle glows from um, some lighting fixtures that would be turned on more for different scenes. Um, you can make out different buttons and diodes and glowing items here and there. And then of course, all these lights, um, there are little ones here, little emergency panels. There are all these fluorescent blue lights that help give a sense of shape and depth and dimension. And these ones around the desk, every bit here gives us a sense of being able to create a shape without distracting too much, hopefully, from the areas of focus. Now we also have our hot light on the chair. We'll bring that one up. Hot light, hot light on the chair. This light here is really meant to help with uh, the dimension and, and being able to have visibility of the chair behind our actress. Um, there's the hero light on the Wheatley droid. I think it was to give a little bit more uh, help with making him out as he floats in the background because as he's, there's not a lot of onset light for him to float in and out of. So I just wanted to give a little bit more to him to be able to pick him out. And finally, I have the red light that is coming 
through the uh, window on stage right. There we go. Subtle, but you can make it out here. Uh, let's also turn on our Lux. And also let's, let's turn on our backdrop so we get the full effect of what the set was. And let's turn on the glow. There we go. Um, we are lighting these areas here on the chair and on the chair a little bit on the desk so we can kind of make out more of that by lighting a little bit right here and right here and right here it allows these areas in shadow to stand out and of course as the camera dollies in it allows us to uh, make these elements out so this is our lighting setup another thing to consider is the camera shot itself. Now there's a fantastic book out there called Masters of Light, Conversations with Contemporary Cinematographers. I highly recommend this book. One of the things they talk about in there is if you're going to do camera movement, in particular dolly shots, it is best to dolly past something. Now in this case, we're actually kind of dollying in on our subject. And as you can see with these earlier renders, I even um, had ideas of the camera moving through part of the holograms. Ultimately though, despite the sense of motion, I found it to be a little distracting. I wanted things to be a little clearer. So eventually I just kind of moved the holograms off uh, a little bit more. Uh, but that is another thing to keep in mind. Think about how it's moving through space. Let's talk about set design. Big surprise, this whole thing uh, had a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe to it. And a lot of the sets with Guardians um, has a sense of metal that uh, has been aged and sitting around a while with splashes of color. So I wanted to infuse that same sensibility with this shot. Uh, I decided to go with the blues so that would all proceed into the background so that our graphics would stand out in front of it. We are back in uh, the area where right now we have composited her roughly into the ship. And the ship right now being uh, brought in through Element 3D and now sharing a 3D space with her being a 2D plane comped into it, it uh, seems to have something futuristic about it with all the metal and all the lights and the circular lights up here and all these you know uh, shapes out here, uh, the windows on the side it at least starts to inform that she's not in a usual office space. Even if we didn't see all the individual props, I wanted to design this set um, with nothing but items that kind of explain who our central character is. So uh, we've got a guitar in the background uh, because she's just that kind of uh, uh, badass musician on the side. We've got all kinds of weapons, and yes, that is a portal gun over on the left-hand side, which you can make out uh, even with its blue glow uh, over there in the final shot. But there are katanas in case it's hand-to-hand. Uh, -hand. There's even a lightsaber hanging off in the corner. And then there are other items. Uh, there's the towel, which is just there for a sense of... Um, Hitchhiker's Guide humor um, and the fact that, you know, sometimes working on a spaceship is sweaty, so why wouldn't you hang a towel around there? Uh, there's a little bit of an iPad tablet thing um, off to the side. Um, there's a pair of steampunk goggles. All these items are meant to uh, either inform on the character or inform on the setting. So if they're not explaining who she is, they're explaining what the set is. And it's all meant to give a sense of futuristic and outer space and just lend itself to that kind of uh, design aesthetic. And now we reach our sound design section. And just like how with uh, building 3D sets, I recommend going online to find uh, places with 3D models that are free. Also go to places like freesound.org, which has a multitude of sounds that you can download royalty free. Um, start with places like this to uh, begin expanding your sound library. Here is uh, where we started as we were editing the pieces together in Premiere all these various audio tracks, which are currently muted out because eventually these had to be muted out when they were replaced with the uh, Adobe Audition ones. But what I did is I had this sequence, uh, and once I had my sound um, roughly laid in, uh, all these tracks here is where I had made sure I had the sequence selected, and went down to Edit, 
edit in Adobe Audition and sequence. And that sends it over to Adobe Audition. So let's take a look at how that looks. Now, I have not used Audition a lot, but I thought this would be a great project to start getting used to the pipeline of bringing in your various sounds, your Foley, and having more control over it. The raw audio wasn't usable for anything uh, on the shot. It was just me giving direction, and it was basically a silent track. We didn't have dialogue, so this has been muted. Uh, but as you can see here, we have a number of individual pieces to build up our world. Like the set design, like the lighting design, this is all meant to inform the story, to kind of give a hint of the environment the character lives in. We have here, very sounds like Spaceship Rattle. Let's solo each of these clips to sample. And these are just meant to be kind of the sounds you would hear in the background if you had a large industrial spaceship moving through space. And then, of course, definitely wanted to have that kind of drone feeling you get uh, with a large object moving through space. So this was a spaceship ambient sound I got at free, freesound.org. Okay, I'm getting some static in this, but this just might be from all my recording equipment going on simultaneously. Voiceovers. So we have the captain with the distress signal and we have the ship uh, saying that the transmission was lost. And both of these were just me. So if we choose this layer, as you can see over here, I've got various uh, filters worked through it. I've got a pitch shift, a parametric equalizer, and some distortion. But if we take all those off, here is what I originally started with. We are under attack from Silurian Raiders. Our weapons have been disabled and our shields are failing. If there is anyone out there, please help us. Help us! And instead, once all that is put back into place, we get this. We are under attack from Silurian Raiders. Our weapons have been disabled and our shields are failing. If there is anyone out there, please help us. Help us! And same here ship's VO. Uh, also, because we're filling up uh, uh, a space, I always had to keep an eye on how I'm using my reverb. So here, oh, let's put this on solo. Transmission lost. Let's put everything back in. Transmission lost. Next, uh, I have soloed out the various tracks of sound that is going on behind our uh, distress signal captain's voice uh, to give a sense of what's going on where he is uh, sending his signal from. So let's go over here. And apologies for the bit of crackle I'm getting on these audio tracks um, as I'm trying to record what I'm playing on the computer while I'm talking about it. Uh, it looks like I'm getting just a little bit of a audio interference here, uh, but trust me, these tracks are clearer <laughs> uh, when rendered by themselves. This is everything that's meant to be going on in the background. Um, the only things I wasn't liking was if you listen, what were meant to be kind of the gunshots or just other sounds like that, it was that, that, that kind of uh, met metallic um, crunch every now and then. It was actually reminding me more of what you hear uh, when there's uh, an off-balance load in a washing machine or a dryer. And I just couldn't get that uh, audio feeling in my mind that it just kept feeling like that. Uh, so eventually in the final edit I started stripping that out. And let's see, uh, then of course we have our little uh, robot in the back. So let's solo uh, both sets of sounds for this person, for this person, for this droid. Oh. 
and these were just um, like camera and other digital sounds that I was finding again at freesounds.org. Uh, oh, we have some leather uh, when our actress is moving, and that was just me uh, holding some uh, heavy leather clothing and uh, doing my own foley just to uh, be able to have them have her move. Okay, that, that's better. You can hear a little bit of the cloth sound, a little bit of distortion uh, coming from my recording equipment still. Uh, then we just had a couple of footsteps of her stepping off. It didn't turn out as, as well as I wanted. Um, I wanted to try and get that sound that you get if you're walking on um, those metal grates that you get in factories or in a lot of spaceships, but I just wasn't quite getting it to work. And it was late at night. Um, let's see, we also have a little bit of computer sounds coming in from uh, what she's watching. Ah, that was uh, meant to uh, sound like the computer still trying to uh, hold on to the signal that it was losing um, and then also to come up at the same time the computer was saying transmission lost and then finally we have uh, our music hits um, from Film Riot I uh, had bought one of their um, uh, let's see, uh, Ben Worley had a number of tracks uh, that they released a while back, That and, and I love Ben's work, uh, primarily with his brother Seth, and so I took The Thing You Do and used that as my main accent underneath this all. So the main thing with the music was to just have that driving sense of urgency. I liked the kind of heartbeat, um, older style, 80s film, John Carpenter kind of feel underneath that. And so I wanted to use that to be my main uh, music cue. And then of course when she's making up her mind to have the reverse swell. I am not a expert sound designer. The manipulation to get that really good mix, that's something I'm still working on. But like everyone else, we're getting there. And then uh, eventually just exported these all back, back to Premiere Pro. Those tracks in Adobe Audition came back and uh, were their own stems. So those were, uh, they made new audio tracks underneath, and then those were all brought in. And then I had to turn off and mute the original tracks, otherwise I would be hearing, you know, echoes and, and unfiltered sounds on top of it. And ultimately, this is how I got my final uh, mix. We've made it to the bonus round where, as I promised at the beginning, uh, we are going to talk about different uh, makers of After Effects scripts that uh, will come and help you in your motion graphic design or in your special effects work. So let's start taking a look. Uh, the first candidate up here is Vaxaid. Vaxaid! I don't know why I keep saying it that way, but I've been finding myself doing that all day today. Vaxaid! Foxide has got uh, uh, some really good stuff. He's a, a great motion graphics artist. Um, this is generally the kind of stuff you'll get from him uh, on a, a HUD design and 
other things. But the area I really want to draw attention to is that he created a utility box. Uh, he calls it, you know, utility box free After Effects script. Uh, no, it's not just a script. It's actually a whole collection of scripts that he has put together, uh, talking about working with scenes, transformations, clones, shapes, grids, expressions, um, and this uh, is just amazing. Um, that you know it's, it's for free uh, allows you to uh, add some uh, additional pieces that hand by hand would take a great deal of time or a lot of expressions work so I always want to share these as soon as I come across them oh I also found from other cubed I found circles which uh, has grown into a larger item which I will get to in a moment but it started off with circles and as you can see here it's just this wonderful wonderful little item uh, as you can see I'm already using it in some of my iconography or whatnot uh, to add a little extra touch if you like this kind of design I highly recommend uh, jumping on this because it makes um, portions of this very easy and customizable you don't have to just stick with circles you can make them into different shapes as well circles has grown now into Vigoro which is an After Effects script that is now for sale for $49, uh, which came out earlier this year, um, which adds a lot more pizzazz and extra touches. Uh, I recommend it as well. However, uh, I just have not uh, had the budget for uh, my purchases yet this year, but uh, show this man some love if you've got an extra 50 bucks and you like this style, go for it. And of course, you cannot seem to talk about things in motion graphics and special effects in After Effects these days and not at some point have to talk about Video Copilot. Um, a free script, and this is, the, this is one of the main things. Uh, uh, one of the amazing things of coming out of Video Copilot is that price-wise, uh, it's really hard to beat free. And it's amazing how often uh, they will release very powerful things. The most uh, recent being Saber, but there's also Vibrans, all other plugins. But let's focus on their scripts. And they do have this free script that talks about 3D uh, pre-composing. And this is an example I've got playing here. Um, there are times where uh, you'll, you're going to need to be able to pre-compose but still retain your camera data or your lighting data and that's not easy to do without doing a lot of copying and then if you change something in one you've got to change in the other this pre-compose script really helps in maintaining a dynamic link to use Adobe's term between different compositions because there are times where the limitations of what you can do in a 2d 2.5d space uh, bumps up against you so definitely look this one up and download it. And talking about Video Copilot, there's an older one that I haven't used in a while and I'm making the assumption that it still works in Adobe Creative Cloud. But a really good one for a while was their um, Sure Target 2. And as you can see here, this is older. <laughs> you can tell just by looking at the screen uh, that this is uh, a while back. But what's great about Sure Target and what became Sure Target 2 is that it helps you use just keyframes to have your camera quickly jump from one item to another. So in this case, if you've got uh, different words floating in different parts of 3D space, or if you just simply have different parts of any uh, 3D space and you need that camera to quickly jump from one to the other, instead of doing a lot of sometimes clumsy camera work, uh, this really makes things easy, where you can just target each of those items and the cam camera will respond accordingly. And then finally, Ugra Media, uh, which is again, another site that if you're not already subscribed to, you should, but they've got a whole section talking about free After Effects script. In this case, 20 free After Effects scripts. However, uh, it looks like this is actually talking more about a whole collection at uh, redefinery.com and basically pointing out all those scripts that are there for free in a big old bundle um, and he breaks down his top 20 there now i have not personally used these but in talking about looking for free after effects scripts it's you can't skip over this one this one's a little too obvious so uh, a lot of these appear to be um, savers uh, or time savers as far as working with keys and markers and, and 
converting things to shapes. So if you're doing a lot of those in your comps, uh, then definitely, again, check them out. Uh, so that is Ucromedia, and the website he's pointing at here is redefinery.com. Let's actually bring that up. Uh, free for all, all in one. There you go. So here is Redefinery's uh, scripts area, and of course, uh, Ucromedia with more of their items. These are all the ones that I have found so far, and I am always trying to keep in mind that uh, we have sometimes no budget at all, so I tend to talk first and foremost about the ones that you can get for free. Uh, eventually we'll start looking at uh, ones where you can get it for purchase. Um, there are websites that are truly dedicated to uh, After Effects scripts and whatnot, but for now, let's just stick with what's for free. And that is your bonus section for completing these three parts. Well, congratulations. We have gotten through all three parts. And if you also did the intro, that's four parts, unless you skip that all, in which case I really recommend you do parts one and two to get the whole flavor of the thing. Um, but meanwhile, stay tuned for more tutorials and extra fun here at Movie Boy. Uh, in the meantime, like, subscribe, comment if there are any parts that felt like went by too fast or too slow or more questions, please answer it down below. In the meantime, thank you, subscribe, and come again.